Dirty dealings, corporate battles, consumer woes. This is Evening Five. Former PM Datuk Sri Najib Razak's lawyer Tan Sri Muhammad Shafi Abdullah announced that his client is waiting for the right time to file a fresh application as he seeks a full pardon. Shafi said that he is waiting for the new Agong to warm his seat before filing his application. He said that the fresh application for a full pardon is because the current pardons board did not act in accordance with its role in the constitution. Shafi elaborated that while the king can hear views of the pardon board, any decision has to be his and and his alone. He also lambasted detractors and critics of Najib's commuted sentence, such as Malaysian Bar President Karen Chia Yilin, G25, and constitutional expert Shad Salim Faruqi. Shafi said some of the comments were uncalled for, taking aim at G25 and Chia. He labelled G25 as completely ignorant in saying that Najib needs to be repentant to get a pardon. He said that Najib's application for a pardon was because he was not granted a fair trial and his constitutional rights were not adhered to in the court process of his SRC international trial and subsequent appeals. During the press conference, Shafi also highlighted what he described as discrepancies in the press release issued by the pardons board last week to announce Najib's commuted sentence. Shafi reiterated Najib's innocence and said that the $42 million which entered Najib's account was all used for charity and elections and not for personal use. KLCCP stapled groups that profit for the fourth quarter rose 38% year-on-year to 384.6 million, primarily due to improvements at its hotel and retail segments, while its office segment remained stable. The group comprising KLCC Property Holdings and KLCC REIT saw quarterly revenue grow by 7% to 442.6 million from 413.3 million previously. It declared a dividend of 14.4 cent per stapled security for the quarter under review, which brings the total declared dividend for the year to 40 and a half sen, the highest it has reported since its listing as a staple security in 2013. For FY 2023, the group's net profit climbed 19% year on year to 931.3 million, while revenue improved by 11% from 1.46 billion in FY 2022 to 1.62 billion ringgit. During the last quarter, the group also recognized a fair value gain of 221.9 million, arising from the overall improvement in the market value of its investment properties, which contributed to its overall bottom line. On its prospects, KLCCP is optimistic that the growth trend for 2024 will remain positive as it looks to continue to leverage its assets, long-term and triple net lease arrangements, underpinned by the solid footing of its retail and hospitality segments. CEO Datuk Motsha Mahmood says the group is optimistic that the upswing will continue, particularly in the retail and hotel segments. He adds that its customer-focused strategy together with the growth in tourism and MICE activities, will strategically position it to synergize efforts and enhance its competitive advantage towards future business sustainability. Despite recording lower sales for FY 2023, Carlsberg Brewery Malaysia's full-year net profit was up 5% to a record high of 333.2 million versus the 317 million it posted a year ago. This was mainly due to the absence of the 21.6 million prosperity tax incurred last year. Its bottom line also saw a boost from the higher share of profit in associate Lion Brewery Ceylon, as well as recognition of 11.3 million in deferred tax income relating to investment allowance of its new bottling line installed last year. Revenue for the year declined 6.3% to 2.26 billion, dragged by lower sales on the back of softer market sentiment and inflationary pressures. The brewer has recommended a final dividend of 31 cents per share, which brings the total declared dividend for FY 2023 to 93 cents per share. This would make it Carlsberg's highest yearly payout since FY 2019. Quarterly net profit for the fourth quarter rose 40% year-on-year to 84 million, also due to the absence of a one off loss and recognition of deferred tax income. Similarly, this improvement in earnings came despite a 5.3% dip in revenue to 580.5 million ringgit. Looking at FY 2024, Carlsberg notes that this year's Chinese New Year season has commenced on a positive note with market activations behind its limited edition festive can in full swing. It has also earmarked 92 million capital expenditure for a new canning line and full system to deliver higher production automation, flexibility and capacity.
Freight forwarding and aerospace logistics provider AGX Group made an impressive debut on the ACE market by opening at 41 sen, 17 percent higher than its listing price of 35 sen. However, the counter was unable to hold on to its early gains, eventually closing one sen up at 36 sen. But it was among Bursa Malaysia's most active, with over 55 million shares traded. On the group's expansion plans post-listing, AGX Singapore Executive Director Mark Penu said that AGX will set up a new warehouse. An office in the port of Tanjung Pelepas to complement its Singapore operations. He pointed out that the forex differentials between the Singapore dollar and the Malaysian ringgit will help contribute to the company's profitability given that its sales are in Singapore dollars while costs are in ringgit. AGX also plans to set up an office in Penang to improve its coverage in the northern region as well as one in Busan, South Korea to support its sea freight division. Meanwhile, AGX expressed its interest in expanding its presence to Indonesia, Thailand and Vietnam, aiming to become one of the largest industry players in Southeast Asia. Furthermore, AGX reiterated its commitment to focusing on the aerospace segment, which counted for 37% of its revenue base. Brexit's new substantial shareholders, Datuk Xiao Gim Shen, Matako Assets Holdings and Bumas Holdings, have extended a formal, unconditional mandatory takeover offer to acquire all the remaining ordinary shares in the company at 85 cent per share. This came after the three parties emerged as the new substantial shareholders of Brexit on January 17th after acquiring a 53.27% stake in the group for a total cash consideration of 78.43 million ringgit. According to a statement issued by U. Will be Kehen Securities Malaysia on behalf of Rexit. The offer will remain open for acceptances until February 28th, being the first closing date. Rexit is principally involved in providing software solutions to insurance and financial services industries, in which it offers various IT solutions and related services. As such, UOB said the joint offerers intend to capitalize on Rexit's track record and other growth opportunities, which are synergistic or complementary with their business involvement. These strategies may include making business arrangements, restructuring, reorganisation and or rationalisation of Rexit's businesses and operations. The parties have also agreed to maintain Rexit's listing status.